Hi everyone, I welcome you to this short course on basic radiobiology. In this first lecture, we will learn the mechanism of radiation induced damage, repair and cell cycle. The question most of us have is, how does radiation affect? The damage caused by radiation could alter tissue function or it could stop tissue function. It has been well accepted that the DNA is the principal target for biological effect of radiation, such as cell killing, carcinogenesis and mutation. Now we know very well that DNA is the principal target for radiation injury. So we need to know about the DNA, that is the deoxyribonucleic acid. What is it? It is a large molecule that has got a double helical structure, as you can see in this diagram here, picture here. Has two strands held together by hydrogen bonds between the bases. Each strand consists of alternating sugar, that is deoxyribose, and phosphate groups. Attached to this are four bases, the sequence of which specifies the genetic code. Two of the bases are thymine and cytosine. They form a single ring group called pyrimidine. And the other two are adenine and guanine. And these form a double, double ring groups called purines. So what does this ionizing radiation do? Ionizing radiation deposits energy that induces or destroys the cell by damaging the genetic material DNA, making it impossible for these cells to continue to grow. So as you can see, the radiation damages the DNA as it is de demonstrated in this picture. The radiation damage to DNA, which is the critical target, could happen by two different mechanisms. One is called the direct action, the other one is called the indirect action. In direct action, the atoms of the target itself may be ionized or excited, thus in initiating the chain of events that leads to a biological damage. In the case of indirect action, the atoms may interact with other atoms or molecules in the cell to produce free radicals that are able to diffuse far enough to reach and damage the critical target. So there are two types of radiation damage here. One is referred to as the direct action. The other one is called the indirect action. In the case of direct action, the atoms of the target itself may be ionized or ionized or excited. And this can initiate a chain of events that will lead to a biological damage. In indirect action, the atoms may interact with other atoms or molecules in the cell to produce free radicals which could diffuse far enough to reach, the damage, reach and damage the critical target, that is the DNA. Let us look at what is exactly the direct action. It occurs when the radiation is absorbed by a molecule known to be critical to, the main, to maintain the life of the cell, which is the DNA. So what happens, a photon comes and interacts and ejects an electron that produces a biological dam damage to the DNA. As you can see in this demonstration, a photon comes, it interacts, ejects an electron and it goes and damages the DNA. This may initiate a series of events that can lead to changes that may be a lethal, that may be lethal to the cell. And please note, this is the dominant process for high LET radiation. Most of the damages of high LET radiation happen by direct action. Let us look at what is indirect action. Occurs when radiation interacts with other molecules in the cell, most importantly water, the product of these interaction may then go and interact with the DNA. Let us look at this, how it happens now. This animation, an incident photon came and hit and ejected an electron, which is an ionization process. This electron goes and interacts with the water molecule and produces what they call OH radical, the free radical, which goes and interacts with the DNA here and damages the DNA. So this is called indirect action. One of the interesting things about the indirect action is that when the free radicals interact and damage the DNA, it fixes the damage. The meaning of fixing here, as explained in Eric book, is it doesn't fix the damage. That means it doesn't repair the damage. It fixes the damage as damage. 
And please note, the indirect action is the dominant process for low elite radiation. And about two thirds of the biological damage caused by X-rays or by indirect action. So please remember that. And also remember, it is not like a direct action where an electron is emitted and the electron goes and damages the DNA. Here, the electron ionization does happen, but the ion goes and interacts with water molecule and the free radical is produced. We'll go further into it and see how the free radicals are produced. First, what is a free radical? A free radical is a molecule or atom which is not combined to anything. That means it's free and carries an unpaired electron in its outer shell. Because it carries an unpaired electron, it is looking for something to interact with or in purely scientific terms, it is in a state associated with a high degree of chemical reactivity because it has an unpaired electron in its outer shell. So how is a free radical formed? You know that 80% of our body, I mean the cell content is approximately 80% is water. So when radiation interacts with the water molecule, and uh, this is what actually happens. When radiation interacts with the water molecule, you have a H2O plus ion and a electron emitted. This H2O plus ion is an ion radical. It is ion as it is charged. It has got a positive charge and radical because it has an unpaired electron in the outer shell. So what is an ion radical? Ion meaning it is electrically charged because it has lost an electron and radical because it has got an unpaired electron in the outer shell, making it very reactive. These ion radicals have a very short life, usually not more than 10 power minus 10 seconds before they decay to form free radicals. So, the process is like this. An ionization event happens, electron is emitted, the electron goes and interacts with the water molecule, produces an ion radical. Now this ion radical results in a free radical. Let us see what is this free radical and how is it formed. Free radicals are not charged, but do have an unpaired electron in the outer shell as we saw earlier. For example, the water ion radical can do the following. So when an electron goes and interacts with the water molecule, we saw a water radical, ion radical is formed, that H2O plus, and it can go and react with another water molecule and have H3O plus and a OH radical. This H2O plus and H3O plus are ion radicals, whereas OH is highly reactive hydroxyl radical, which is called the free radical. It has got nine electrons, therefore one is unpaired. These hydroxyl radicals go on to interact with this DNA, which is the free radical. As I said earlier, it is estimated that about two thirds of the X-rays interact with the DNA by this indirect action. That is, they produce free radicals and the free radicals go and produce the damage to the DNA. In summary, the indirect action is as follows. There is an incident X-ray photon, which produces an ionization. That means it ejects an electron and it ejects actually a fast electron. It occurs in about 10 power minus 15 seconds. This is the physical process. Then an ion radical is formed because it interacts with the water molecule. It, the ion radical lives for about 10 power minus 10 seconds. Then a free radical is formed, which lives for about 10 power minus 15 seconds, five, seven, five seconds before it goes and damages the DNA and brings in chemical changes, that is the breakage of bonds. And this breakage of bonds results in biological effect, but this biological effect take, may take hours, days, months or years or may not happen at all, depending on the consequences of the bonds book. So the physics is very fast, 10 power minus 15 seconds. Then ion radical and free radical, I say chemistry, is a little slower, 10 power minus 10 to 10 power minus 5 seconds. And the biological effect finally takes day, hours, days, months, and years. We looked at the DNA damage, how the DNA gets damaged. We looked at the direct action and the indirect action. Now we need to know what is cell death. Cell death is loss of a specific function in differentiated cells, such as a nerve, muscle, or secretory cells. Loss of the ability to divide 
in the case of proliferating cells such as the stem cell in hematopoietic system or intestinal epithelium. Loss of reproductive integrity for otherwise called the reproductive death. So these are defined as the cell death. The DNA damage and when it repairs, some aberrations happen. They can be classified as this. The DNA damage could be base damage, DNA protein cross-link damage, or a single strand braid or a double strand braid. These two are important, so we will look at this now. Okay, and then the aberrations could be chromosome aberrations, which could result in ring or dicentric, or chromatid aberration, which is referred to as the anaphase bridge. What is radiation damage? Radiation induces a large number of lesions in DNA. Most of them are readily re successfully repaired. A dose of radiation that induces an average of one lethal event per cell leaves 37% of irradiated cell still viable, still living. This is called D0 dose. Actually, in the next lecture, I will talk to you in more detail about the D0, D0 dose, which leaves 37% of the cells still viable. The number and type of DNA lesions per cell detected immediately after a dose of one gray is approximately 40 double strand breaks and 1000 single strand breaks. Please remember this number. I will be referring to it in a few slides. So 40 double strand breaks and 1000 single strand breaks. Base damage is greater than 2000 and DNA, DNA cross links are about 30. What is a single strand break? When you say single strand break, it represents break in one strand of the DNA. When cells are irradiated with X-rays, many breaks of a single strand occur. These single strand breaks are of little biological consequences as far as the cell killing is concerned, as they are readily repaired using the opposite strand as a template. As you can see in this diagram, this is a DNA. And what you see here is a single strand break. This will repair taking this portion as a replica and template and repair this. So when a photon comes and interacts, as you can see in this, it produces a damage here. And this is referred to as the single strand break because this damage is repaired by taking this as the template. So here is another single strand break, which repairs by taking this one as a template. See, this is not double strand break. Please look at it. These are two single strand breaks. Then what is a double strand break? So before we go into the really double strand break, I will talk about the one I just said, that is the two single strand breaks. See, if both the strands of the DNA are broken, and the breaks are well separated, repair again occurs readily because the two breaks are handled separately. This is what we looked at here. The two breaks are handled separately. If the breaks are in the opposite strands, to opposite to each other, or separated by only a few base pairs, this may lead to a double strand break. So if you look at it, the, this one, see it comes and it breaks the DNA, one strand here, one strand here, which means it goes into actually two pieces of chromatin. It snaps into two pieces, right? So you can see here, there is a single strand, uh, there is a break here and there is a break here. They are exactly opposite. Now the DNA goes at two pieces the chromatin snaps into two pieces. So this is a double strand break. So double strand break is believed to be the most important lesion produced in chromosomes by radiation. It is the most lethal form of ionizing radiation induced damage. The yield is in irradiated cell is about 0 0.04 times of single strand break. This is why I said, please remember that 40 double strand and 1000 single strand. So it's only 40 out of 1000 of single strand break will be the double strand break. You will have 0 0.04 times of single strand break. That means if you have 1000 single strand breaks, you will have only 40 double strand breaks. The double strand break is induced linearly with dose. 
we will discuss this in more detail in the next lecture there is a good reason to believe that double strand break rather than the single strand break breaks lead to important biological endpoints including the cell death carcinogenesis and mutation so it is believed the double strand break rather than the single strand break is important leads to important biological endpoints we will look at the dna repair now we looked at the damage we will look at the repair the single strand break mostly repairs itself no problem but the double strand break may also rejoin in the original configuration that two pieces of chromatin could come back and join in the original configuration but quite unlikely what could happen is the breaks may fail to rejoin and give rise to an aberration they don't join at all that means the dna is gone it's a deletion of the dna or broken ends may reassort and rejoin other broken ends leading to a grossly distorted chromosome so this is another possibility the broken ends may reassort and rejoin other broken ends leading to a grossly distorted chromosome it won't be the original chromosome the double strand break repair process can be two one is called non homologous end joining the other one is called homologous recombination repair hrr the non homologous end joining the immediate response of a cell to a dna double strand break is the activation of a group of sensors that serve both to promote dna repair and to prevent the cell from proceeding in the cell cycle until the break is faithfully repaired so it will prevent it from going into the cell cycle until the break is faithfully repaired this is called non homologous end joining homologous recombination repair is the requires an undamaged dna strand as a participant in the repair as a template so this figure illustrates how it happens so this is a repair without a sister chromatid this is using a sister chromatid so let us look at chromosome and chromatid aberration chromosome aberration is one where the cell is irradiated before the chromosome material has duplicated that is any break is replicated in the duplicated chromatid strands so chromosome aberration is one where the cell is irradiated before the chromosome material has duplicated so any when it duplicates any damage is replicated chromatid aberration is one the radiation injury after the dna material has doubled and the chromosomes consist of two strands of chromatin so chromatid aberration is the radiation injury after the dna material has doubled we will look little more into the chromosome aberration and chromatid aberration radiation induced breakage and incorrect rejoining in pre replication that is in the g1 chromosome may lead to chromosome aberration so if it happens in the pre replication chromosome then it may lead to chromosome aberration this is referred to either ring formation or dicentric formation what you see here is the ring formation that is incorrect union and this is the dicentric formation what is chromatid aberration radiation induced breakage and incorrect rejoining in the post replication late s or g2 chromosomes may lead to chromatid aberration what you see here is the anaphase bridge formation let us look at the cell cycle mammalian cells propagate and proliferate by mitosis when a cell divides two progeny cells are produced both progeny cells carry a chromosome identical to that of the parent cell after an interval of time each of the progeny may undergo a further division the time between successive divisions is known as the mitotic cell cycle time or cell cycle time in this picture the circumference of the circle represents a full mitotic cycle time for the cells the period of mitosis is represented by m 
the DNA synthetic phase is represented by S. G1 and G2 are the gaps or the period of apparent inactivity between the major events in the cell cycle. That is the mitosis and the synthetic phase. The G1 and G2 are the gaps, otherwise called the period of apparent inactivity. Let us now look at the relationship between the cell cycle and radio sensitivity. Cells are most sensitive at or close to mitosis. Resistance is usually greatest in the later part of the S phase. In G1 phase, if G1 phase has an appreciable length, a resistant period is evident in early G1, followed by a sensitive period toward the end of the G1. G2 phase is usually sensitive, perhaps as sensitive as the M phase. So if you see the mitosis and as well as the G2 or sensitive phases, resistance is usually greatest in the later part of S phase. If G1 phase is appreciable length, a resistant period is evident in early G1, but sensitive period toward the end of G1. So this is how the radio sensitivity and the cell cycle are related. The pattern of radio sensitivity and radio resistance correlates with the mechanism of repair of DNA double strand breaks. Radio sensitivity correlates with non-homologous end joining which dominates early in the cell cycle and is error prone. Radio resistance correlates with homologous recombination repair which occurs after replication in S phase and is more faithful. Variations in sensitivity through the cell cycle may lead to sensitization resulting from reassortment in fractionated regimen. We will look at it more when we, in the third lecture when we discuss about the fractionation. Thank you very much for listening. As usual, there will be some MCQs. If you do that, it may be quite useful for you. Please do that before you move on to the next lecture.